for our Sunday morning moment of divine exchange here at Unwavering Faith Christian Church, one church in two locations in the beautiful city of Waco, Texas, and also in the beautiful city of China Spring, Texas. We praise God and we thank God this morning uh, for his faithfulness. We thank and we praise God for who he is. We thank and we praise God for his loving kindness and his mercies towards us. Amen. And we thank God for you, each one of you taking your time to tune in with us this morning, amen, to be a part of this broadcast, to be a part of what God is doing here at Unwavering Faith Christian Church. And we're so delighted and so grateful that we have the opportunity to come into your homes on this morning and to declare the word of God, amen, through praise and worship and through the preached and taught word of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. If you would at this time, come on and bow with me as we go before the Lord on this morning. Father, we thank you and we praise you, God, for this day. This is again a day that you have made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you, God, for your love, your peace. We thank you, God, for your grace and for your mercy. We thank you, God, how you continue to show forth your love towards us. We thank and we praise you, God, that we have health in our bodies. We have sound minds, God. We thank you, Father, that our senses are intact. And we thank you, God, that even in the midst of what's going on, you are still God and you still reign supreme and you still shower us, God, with your blessings. Thank you, God, for allowing Allowing us to operate under an open heaven. Father, we thank you that your mercies are new every morning in the mighty name of Jesus. And so, God, we hide ourselves behind the cross this morning that we may not be seen, God, but it's you that will be seen this morning. As Paul says, no more I, but the Christ that lives on the inside of me. And so, Father, as we minister this morning through praise and worship, as we minister, Father, through the preached word of God, our desire is that, the, that Jesus Christ would be seen through all that we do because it's all about him and not about us. So Holy Spirit, you have your way in this moment of divine exchange today. We give it all to you and we yield our members for service. We thank you, God, for souls that will be saved on today. We thank you for backsliders returning unto you. And we thank you, God, that someone, God, will make a decision to become a part of a local assembly that they may go in, God, and, us, and serve in the capacity that you're calling them to serve. And they may be a benefit, God, to the body of Christ as the whole. So we bless you today. We honor you and magnify you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. To God be the glory. Come on and help me give God a hand of praise on this morning. Glory to God. Glory to God. This is the day that the Lord has made. Oh God, and we rejoice and we're so glad and we're so grateful and we're so thankful unto God. Hallelujah. Oh, we can't praise him enough. We can't magnify him enough. Lift up your head, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up the everlasting doors. And the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord God, strong and mighty. The Lord God, mighty in battle. He is the King of glory. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Come on and join in with us now as we go, amen, to China Spring, Texas, amen, to our own minister, Colin McKinney, as she ministers to us this morning through praise and worship. Come on and give God some glory. Come on and give God some praise on this morning. Hallelujah. We bless you this morning. We honor you, Lord. We lift you up in the house, both the house of the Lord and our personal houses. We love you and we thank you for your resurrection power. Hallelujah. Let's go. One, two, Come on, clap it up. Hallelujah. Oh, clap your hands, all ye people, and shout unto God. With the voice of triumph, oh, 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 with the voice of triumph, oh, 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 you are the everlasting God. Shine your light through us for all the world to see. Yeah, you are the hope of broken hearts. You overcame the grave to save humanity. Sing hallelujah, Jesus is alive. Oh, clap your hands, all ye people, and shout, come on and shout. 
Hallelujah. Hey. Oh, clap your hands. All ye people and shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Oh, oh, oh. with a voice of triumph. Oh, 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 you are the hope of broken hearts. You overcame the grave. To save humanity, sing hallelujah. Jesus is alive, he's alive, he's alive. Oh, clap your hands, all ye people, and shout unto God. Oh, clap your hands. And shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Hey, oh, with the voice of triumph. Oh, say, oh, say, you're alive, you're alive in me. Resurrection power. That's resurrection power. Resurrection power. Hey. Oh, you're alive, you're alive. You're alive in me. That's resurrection power. Resurrection. Oh, that's so much power. Hallelujah. And it lives in you and me. I'm alive in you. That's resurrection power. Hallelujah. Oh, clap your hands. Yeah. Hey, oh, clap your hands. Oh, ye people, and shout unto God. Oh, clap your hands. Oh, ye people, and shout unto God. With a voice of triumph, you're alive, you're alive, you're alive in me. That's resurrection power. Hallelujah. I'm alive, I'm alive, I'm alive in you. That's resurrection power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So clap your hands. Come on, just chant this with me. Just chant this with me and say, Oh, you're alive, you're alive in me. That's resurrection power. Say, Oh, I'm alive. I'm than you that's resurrection power i want you to get that this morning say oh you're alive you're alive in me i'm talking about jesus christ hey resurrection power oh Say, I'm alive, I'm alive in you. That's resurrection power. Hallelujah. And that power lives within you and me. Come on, access that power this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. As we go into worship. Thank you, Lord. You're worthy, God. Come on, with hands lifted up. Your praise and worship is power. Did you know that? Come on, lift up your hands. Hallelujah. 
and give your Lord your personal worship, your love, your adoration. Tell him how much you love him. Hallelujah. We bless you, Lord. Hallelujah. Say, Hosanna oh, in the highest. Let our King be lifted up. Oh, Hosanna. Oh, Come on, lift your voice. Oh, that 
beautiful. Come on, give him thanks and praise. Come on, lift your voices this morning right where you are. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, lift it up. Lift up your shout of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, we bless you on this day, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, we lift you up. things new. The word declares that in him we are a new creation. Behold, old things are passed away and all things have become new in Christ Jesus. And we shall follow him forward. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Minister McKinney, for that powerful praise and worship. Glory to God. Oh, clap your hands, oh ye people, and shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It's in him that we have the victory. Our victory is in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Not in any work of our own, but it's in the finished redemptive work of Christ on the cross of Calvary. So we're so grateful and thankful unto him. Again, thank you, Minister McKinney, for that praise and worship on this morning. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I want to acknowledge now our August, this being the second day of August, I want to acknowledge our August birthdays. If uh, you're celebrating a birthday in August, uh, I want you to go ahead and just type it in there. You know, it's me or however you want to put it. Wait, man, we want to salute you. We want to celebrate you uh, on this morning. If you have a birthday in the month of August, amen, go ahead and type it in. We want to celebrate you and even serenade you on this morning. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I want to send out a special shout out to uh, my grandbaby number four. Amen. Little Miss Ayla Monet. She is four years old today. Amen. And she is by far uh, the most bossy of my grandbabies. Uh, amen. Uh, uh, she, she packs a powerful punch in a little a small little body. Uh, so if you're watching, if mom and dad are watching, Ayla, happy birthday. Mimi and Poppy will be talking to you later on today. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Is there, are there any birthdays? Who do we have today? Oh, Miss Reed, Sister Lucretia Reed. Amen. Turning 25 on the 21st. God bless you, ma'am. To God be the glory. Amen. Do we have any more birthdays in the month of August before we serenade Sister Lucretia? Glory to God. Amen. If not, we're not going to prolong it. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. God bless you. Happy birthday to you. And we pray in advance. We thank God in advance for many, many, many more prosperous and healthy birthdays. Amen. For you in the years to come. God bless you. 
I know the children are going to fix you up something nice on that day. So just get ready for it. Be ready, be ready, be ready. Amen. Glory to God. I want you now, if you were to stand, amen. And again, I'm going to remain seated uh, as I don't want to be jumping up and down. Uh, some may or may not know, but I uh, have a partially torn Achilles uh, tendon in my right uh, my right leg, amen, I sustained an injury while exercising, uh, so I'm going to remain seated if, uh, if, if, you, if that's okay, uh, but I would like for you all to stand for the reading of God's word on this morning as we go to Psalm 91, our providential psalm of protection, which we pray over our servicemen and women, and we also pray this over our uh, public servants as well as over our own families, amen. So Psalm 91, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noise of pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shall thy trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and dragon shalt thy trample under feet. Because he had set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. To God be the glory, amen, for his providential psalm of protection over our lives, Psalm 91. Glory to God. Come on now and let's do what's customary. I want you to get in that chat box and greet one another in the love of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Just quickly, quickly, just tell them, amen, we're glad you're here. However you want to greet them, amen, because normally at this time we would cross the aisles, which is revival. We cross the aisles to hug on each other, to love on each other, to revive one another, amen, to offer uh, uh, encouraging words, amen, or encouraging word to someone to help lift their spirits, Amen. That is our revival, crossing the aisles. Glory to God. So go ahead and type in that chat box uh, however you want to greet your fellow brother or sister on this morning. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. God is so good. He's so awesome. I just want to, I've been having, having a, a In, in, in my spirit this, this week, I shared with my wife, um, just, just the spirit of exhortation. Uh, you know, I, I preach, you know, Sunday after Sunday, uh, and, and I love preaching. I love preaching the gospel. I love preaching the gospel. I love witnessing to people. I love talking about the goodness of Jesus. I, I love uh, seeing people whole. I love seeing people healthy. I love seeing people operating in the gifts that God has given unto them. I love seeing people maximizing their uh, fullest potential. So today I just want to, uh, I just want to exalt you, exhort you on today. I'm sorry, I just want to exhort you uh, on today. And I want to exhort you from the topic, oh, how he loves us. Oh, how he loves us. And I'm going to be coming from uh, multiple scriptures on today. Oh, how he loves us. I, as I was studying and even doing my personal study, uh, right now I'm doing a, uh, a personal study and it has been such, uh, such a blessing unto me. I'm, uh, I'm actually in the book of second Chronicles and we know we're all familiar with second Chronicles chapter number seven. Uh, and so I'm studying chapter number six and chapter number seven and it's been such a blessing. So in the midst of my personal studies, I asked God, I said, God, what do you have 
uh, for your people this Sunday? What would you uh, desire me to minister this Sunday? And just as clear as I'm talking to you now, God said, tell them this. And I wrote it down so uh, I would not misquote it. I wrote it down so I would not forget uh, a single word of it. And this is exactly how it came to me. Tell them I love them and I only have the very best for them. And that was it. Tell them I love them and I only have the very best for them. Someone needs to write that down because that's encouraging enough right there. Someone needed to hear just that piece right there from the very mouth of God. Tell them I love them and I only have the best for them. And so I want to, eg eg I want to exhort you this morning uh, from the topic, oh, how he loves us. And, and of course, when we're talking about love, when we're talking about the love of God, first and foremost, we know that uh, the love of God is the agape love. And, and we know that we, we, we studied earlier, um, maybe a couple months ago, we, we studied about the different uh, types of love. Uh, we talked about the, uh, the filio, we talked about the brotherly kind of love. And uh, then we, we talked about uh, the storge with, with uh, that, that uh, sister, the, you know, the, uh, the, the friend to friend, uh, and family kind of love, you know, we, we, we discussed that. Uh, and then we talked about the eros, that is the husband and wife uh, kind of love. And then we talked about the agape, which is the God kind of love. And so we understand the agape, we understand the God kind of love, but even though we understand that there is an agape love, we still need to dive deeper and understand that and accept that that agape love is for me. You know, so often we, we, we expect to see others do so well. We expect to see others be so blessed. And especially if they, if they, if they have a title uh, or hold a position, we, we expect God to bless them. We expect God to love them, but we don't always receive that for ourselves. God wanted me to let you know today that that's for you. That love is also for you. No, no, there is no greater love than this that a man would lay down his life for a friend. We are friends of God. And we are of the household of faith. We are friends of God. And so, when we again, when we talk about the love of God as it pertains to scriptures, we automatically go where? To John 3, 16. Probably the most noted and the most quoted scripture in all of the Bible. We even see it at ball games. We see it when we're watching the games on television. We see it in the backdrop, John 3, 16. Someone is desiring to get the message out that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth upon him, who? Upon the son of God shall not perish but shall have everlasting life and so we understand we quote that scripture and we 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 recognize that scripture we even know uh where it is we know that it's john 3 16 so if someone begins to quote that we automatically know that's john 3 16 and if someone says john 3 16 we automatically begin to quote for god so loved the world so we know that scripture we understand we 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 uh um we're familiar with that scripture i'm not going to go and say we understand it uh because it Everybody still does not understand the scripture, but we all know the scripture. So I, I want you to understand the scripture this morning. I want you to understand what God did. I want you to understand why God did it. And I want you to understand and accept that it applies to you. It's for you. It's for you to own. And I want you to own it today. You see, because uh, life is uh, life can be a turmoil at times. Life can be frustrating at times. Life can be confusing at times. Life can be a literal hell at times. Come on now, help me somebody. You know I'm speaking truth on this morning. You see, all of us go through some of the same things. No one, no one is exempt from life. And no one is exempt from the circumstances that life may present. But this is what I need you to understand this morning, that in the midst of those circumstances, in the midst of those situations, God's love reigns supreme. In other words, God's love cannot be minimized, nor can his love be, be added to, because God's love is already maxed out 
for each and every one of us. I really want you to get them in your spirit this morning. I want you to be able to accept that this morning because some have been, uh, your hearts have been broken by, by loved ones. Your heart has been broken because you didn't get a job. Your heart has been broken because you didn't get a promotion. Your heart has been broken because of your health. Your heart has been broken because of your lack of wealth. Your heart has been broken because you didn't get the home you desired. Your heart has been broken because your credit didn't allow you to qualify for the car that you really wanted. So much of life has happened to you. But beloved, understand this, that in the midst of all of those disappointments, God's love was still maxed out for you. You were able to recover because of God's love. You were able to start afresh because of God's love. I, I, my, my late bishop used to say this, that, that because of what's on the inside of us, because of the love of God that's on the inside of us, you can strip us down naked and put us in the middle of New York City. And because a prosperous man understands who he is in God and understands the love of God for him, that man will come out with a brand new suit, a brand new hat, a brand new pair of shoes and looking prosperous. Why? Because the love of God did not leave him in the midst of his situation. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You, 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 may, you may be feeling down even today. I just want to encourage you. I just want to exhort you. You may be feeling down today because of what someone has said. Even overnight, maybe someone said something to you. Even this morning, someone has already said something to you that just, uh, that just uh, grieved your spirit and you're down in your spirit right now. But beloved, I need you to understand this. God's love is a pickup. God's love is a pick-me-up. God's love will take you from the deepest of pits and the darkest of days and bring you up to the highest of heights and the brightness of days. The brightness of his son, the son, Jesus Christ, will shine up on you as bright as the noonday. Why? Because it's the love of God. No, it's not because we deserve it. It's not because we're worthy, but it's because his love is his love. His love cannot, there is nothing that can compare to the love of God. Absolutely. Absolutely nothing that can compare to the love of God. Oh my God, my God, my God. As, 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 as much as we love husbands, as much as we love our wives, and wives as much as you love your husbands, and parents as much as we love our children, that love that we have for them cannot compare, cannot even begin to compare to the love that God has for us. Now let's go in a little more into the scripture because I want to inundate you with word on today. I want to in, I want to inundate you with scripture on today because I want you to take these scriptures and I want you to meditate on these scriptures and I want you to apply them to your life. I want you to know who you are in him. I want you to know that he loves you. The song say, oh, he loves me. Oh, how he loves me. He loves me. Oh, how he loves me. And then, you know, growing up as a child, we sang that, that ever popular song, Yes, Jesus Loves Me. Why? Because the Bible tells me so. And because it's written in the word of God, it is so. It is factual. It is so that, yes, Jesus loves me. Glory to God. Come on and turn with me, if you would, to Romans chapter 5. And uh, Romans chapter 5. Let me get there. I'm sorry. It's going to be Romans chapter 8. So Romans chapter 8 and verse number 35. We'll begin our reading there. Uh, Romans chapter 8 and verse number 35 is our next uh, passage of scripture that I want to bring to your attention. And, and, and out of the King James Version, this is how that scripture reads. Romans, again, Romans chapter 8. Verse 35, go ahead and type in there when you're there. So we, we, we want you to be here because I want you to get these scriptures. Is this good to you already? Glory to God. So Romans chapter eight and verse number, we started at verse number 35. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress? Shall persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for thy sake, we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, listen to this. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors 
through him that what? That loved us. For I am persuaded, oh my, this gets me shouting right here. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life no angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come. Come on, my God, my God. Everything is covered. Nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Now, my God, my God, this is what this, this scripture is saying. We, 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 we now, now life, death, height, not, nothing, nothing can separate us from the love of God. Now, here's what I need you to understand. This is not saying that we won't separate ourselves from God. This is not saying that our love for God will not diminish. This is not saying that our love for God will be absent. This is not what well, won't be absent. This is not saying that we won't get upset with God and act like we don't love God. No, what this is saying is no matter what we go through, all of these situations will not stop God from loving us. This is saying that it will not separate us from his love. Oh, come on, help me somebody, help me somebody. If I can run around right now, I would, because this is exciting. This is life. This is awesome. This is an awesome time to be alive. This is an awesome time to be saved. This is an awesome time to be a child of the most high God, that nothing can separate us from the love of God. Woo! Corona can't separate us from the love of God. Being laid off can't separate you from the love of God. As a matter of fact, even in the midst of some of you being laid off, you're being more prosperous than you were when you were working. And that's only because of the love of God. Only God can, call, can, can prosper you to be able to pay off bills in the midst of a pandemic. And, and I'm not saying pay on time. I'm saying pay them off in full. Only the love of God will, 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 will give you uh, what's needed, the, 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 the provisions to be able to purchase a home in the midst of a pandemic, to buy a new automobile in the midst of a pandemic. So, so, so God's love has not left you. God so loves us that he's still making provisions for us. Even in the midst of a pandemic, the love of God is yet allowing us to operate and flow under an open, uh, under an open heaven. Come on and give God praise, somebody. Come on. And I don't mean patty cake. Come on and give God a real praise. Give God a true praise. The Bible says that those that worship him, we must worship him in spirit and in truth. Give God a true praise this morning. Because he's more than worthy. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now Romans 5 and verse number 8. I want to go ahead and go there now. I wanted to get 8 and 35 through 39 into your spirits. And now we can go to Romans 5 and chapter and Romans chapter. Chapter 5 and verse number 8. But God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, listen at that, Christ died for us. God commended his love towards us that in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. I want to say that again because some, you, 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 you have been so hard on yourself and, and you've done some things. Yes, you've done some horrible things. I, I know you have because we all have. We've done some displeasing things. We all have. We've done some things that have really uh, 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 touched the heart of God, uh, but, but not in a way that pleases him. We all have done that. But in that, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. I want you to understand this morning that you cannot do anything bad enough that stops God from loving you. Don't let anyone tell you, especially the enemy. The Bible tells us that he is an accuser of the brethren. 
Don't allow anyone to tell you that what you have done or even what you're doing now, because you have a time and space right now to get it right with God. Whatever it is you may be involved in right now that's not of God, you have this time and this space to get it right. And God is allowing this time and this space because that's how much he loves you. He's allowing you time and space to get it right with him. You are still alive because God is not done with you. You are still alive because there's something on the inside of you that God still wants to get out. You are still alive because you still have work to do. You are still alive because God is still depending on you to carry out something that he has, he has ordained you to carry out. And only you can carry that out. You are still alive for a purpose. Rise up, child of God. Rise up, child of God. Rise up, child of God. Rise up this morning, unbeliever. Give your life to Jesus Christ. Rise up this morning, unbeliever, and do as John and John said as he went preaching in the wilderness. Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. Rise up today and give God your all. Rise up today and give God your heart and allow the Spirit of God to change your life today. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is not mad at you. God loves you with an everlasting love. That word commended means this, made it highly recognizable. That's what he did. God made his love. The word, come on, let's go back to the scripture. But God commended his love. In other words, God made his love highly recognizable towards us. He brought it to the attention of all. In essence, God is saying, even though you rebelled and are still rebelling against me, by walking in disobedience, I still love you enough to pay the ultimate sacrifice. This is a love never seen before, and this is a love that will never be seen again as far as the sacrifice, because Jesus only had to do it once. He got it right the first time. And so the love that was displayed at Calvary is the love that God still has for us for me, for you, right this very moment. You've been looking for love in all the wrong places. You've been looking for love in all the wrong people. And because someone that you really cared about hurt you sincerely, hurt you dearly, now you're finding it hard to believe that someone that you've never seen can love you as much as I'm speaking about this morning. But beloved, know that it is true that God loves you with an everlasting love and God loves you on purpose. And the reason I say God loves you on purpose is because God's love is unconditional. You see, we have that conditional kind of love. I'll love you if you love me. I'll do for you if you do for me. No, that's not the God that we serve. God loved us while we were yet sinners. In other words, he loved us while we were totally against him. And he sent his son to die for us that he would reconcile us back to himself because that's how much he values his creation. That's how much he values each and every one of us. Don't allow anyone to tell you that you don't hold value. Oh yeah, you hold value. You are precious in his sight. You are beloved of the Father, and not only that, you are accepted into the beloved. That is, you're accepted into the household of God. You're accepted into the very love and the arms of God. That's why God continues to give us chances after chances, opportunities after opportunities to get it right with him, because the God's desire is that no one will perish and see a burning hell. His desire is that all of us are caught up together with him and be with him, that we may all see him face to face. Man, you get excited over a family reunion down here. Oh my God, think about the reunion when we all get to heaven. Oh my God, the song say, what a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see Jesus. We'll sing and shout the victory. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Are you looking forward to that day? Are you excited about that day? I'm excited about that day, but I'm also excited about the fact that I can live my best life down here because of the love of Jesus Christ. Glory to God. He commended his love towards us. He made it highly recognizable. God's love was, God's love was not hidden. He put it out for all the world to see. You know, his, 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 love, is, his love is not like 
<laughs> his, lo his love is not like that one that continues to tell you, oh, baby, you know I love you. Come on, girl, you ain't got to keep asking me that. You know I love you. But nothing is ever shown publicly. Nothing is ever expressed publicly. You see, his love is never expressed for you widely on Facebook. Because if that love is expressed for you widely on Facebook, the chances are somebody else is going to see that love. Maybe, maybe it's the same person that he's telling that same thing to. <laughs> maybe it's the same person that she's sharing that same emotion and feelings with on the other side of the spectrum. But you see, God was not, God didn't have to be concerned with that because God loves everybody equally and God's love was put on public display for all to see. He didn't have a private love. Mm. Glory to God. That just set somebody free right there. That just set somebody free. If you can't love me openly, if you can't express your love to me openly, mm. 1 John 4 and 16. 1 John 4 and 16, and it reads as this, And we have known and believed the love that God hath, hath to us. God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. Did you get God's love? God's love, when we're dwelling in God's love, when we accept God's love, then we dwell in his love, and then God, and God dwells in us. Well, let me change that. You see, because God dwells in us, and because God dwells in us, we're able to dwell in the love of God. Because our, our love cannot supersede God's love. So because of the love of God in us, because God's, God's love dwells in us, then we're able to dwell in love. One for another, as well as our love for the Father. Then 1 John 4 and 10, herein is love, not that we love him, but that he loved us and sent his son, and in, in parentheses there, most Bibles you have in parentheses, to be. But I'm going to leave out there because that was added uh, to, to, to maybe help further understand the, 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 the passage, but I'm going to read it in its original text, and so that to be is not included in the original text, and so I'm going to read it in the original text. So it's herein is love, not that we love him, but that he loved us and sent his son, here we go, sent his son the propitiation for our sins. Did you get that? So, so if I put in the quotes, uh, it, it'll say his son to be the the propitiation but 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 get this reading it in the original text and sent his son the propitiation for our sins and 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 that propitiation is an action meant to regain someone's favor or make up for something you did wrong so jesus was sent to regain our favor, to regain the favor of God in our lives. He was sent to correct something that we did wrong. He, he wasn't just sent to be, but he was sent as the perpetuation for our sins, meaning that there could not be another. You see that there could not be another. Because if we leave that to be in there, that would suppose that, that, that someone else could have been. And they were saying that he was sent to be. No, it is not that he was sent to be. He was sent the perpetuation. He was the only one that could have done it. No one else could have done that. No one else could have fulfilled that task. Because God had to reach down within himself, bring himself out, send himself down, and, and be born of a virgin, and go to the cross and die to save us in order to, to, to bring us back to him. No one else was qualified to do that. No one else was without spot or wrinkle. No one else was without sin. No one else was blameless. Absolutely no one else could do that. So, beloved, I want you to be encouraged today. 
and know that God loves you with an everlasting love. And that no matter what you go through, no matter what comes your way, no matter where you find yourself, God's love cannot be separated from you. There's nothing that you can do and or say that will cause God to love you more than he already does. Be encouraged today. Lift your head up. Keep your head up. Keep your chest out, not in pride or in boastfulness, but, but, but allow your boast to be in your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ the author and the finisher of your faith, the maker, the creator of all things. You are loved. You are loved. Not only are you loved, but you are wanted by God. And his desire is for you to prosper. His desire is for you to be in health. His desire is for you to be whole. His desire is for you to have joy. His desire is for you to live a, a, a fulfilled life. And his desire is for you to operate to your full potential in him. How do we do that? By recognizing and acknowledging the love that God has for each and every one of us. I know this is short, but I just wanted to exhort you on today. I really didn't want to just preach a gospel message. I wanted to exhort you because I know that someone needed this today. Someone needed this today because you've been feeling down. You've been feeling low. You've been feeling, you've been walking in depression, oppression. You've been feeling like the weight of the world is coming down on you. But know this, and you've been walking in fear, but know the Bible lets us know that perfect love, that is the love of God. He's the only one that has perfect love, that had perfect love, cast out all fear. And the love of God is able to bring us up out of the depths of our sorrows and place us on a platitude of joy. We can look up today. We can look up this morning and we can see the love of God moving in our lives. If you'll be honest with yourself, you can see the love of God moving in your lives. If you'll be honest with yourself, you can see the 99 positive things going for you and know that they outweigh the one negative thing that's going that, that, that's in your way. Amen. Allow the love of God to lift you up this morning and say, God, in the midst of this one thing or in the midst of these two things, God, I praise you. I magnify you. God, I accept. I receive your love for me this morning because, God, your love is greater. Your love love is greater, God, than anything that can come against me. Your love is greater, God, than any negative thing that can be said about me. Your love is greater, God, than any relationship that has failed in my life. God, your love is greater. Your love is a pick-me-up. And so, God, I accept my pickup today. I am, I am making a pickup, and I'm accepting my pickup on today. Be lifted higher. Be lifted higher with the love of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank and we praise you, God, today. We thank you, God, for your love. We thank you, God, that your love is from everlasting to everlasting. We thank you, God, that we have been encouraged on today that your love cannot uh, 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 be removed from us, that God, no matter what happens, no, 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 no death, God, uh, uh, life, death, height, God, none of that can separate us from your love. Famine or peril, nakedness, God, none of that can separate us from your love. And we're so grateful this morning. We have an attitude of gratitude. Our spirit man has been lifted, God. Our souls have been revived and refreshed, restored and renewed because of the word of God. It's not our hearts burning this morning because of your word, God. You love us, God. You love us, God. You love us, God. You love us, God. And we accept it today in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, if you're one that would say, I, I, I want that love. I want that love. I want you to know that you already have that love. Because again, the Bible say that God's love will not be separated from us. And so even though you have not yet given your life to Christ, his love is still in your heart, in your life. His, still, his love is still upon you. And it's his love and his grace and his mercies that's been keeping you all of this time. And so if you would say this morning, I want to give my life to Jesus Christ. I, I want to give my life to Jesus Christ. I want to show God my gratitude for his love. 
And the only way that I can really do that is by accepting his son, Jesus Christ, and giving my life to him. And so if you would say, I want to give my life to Christ today, or if you would say, I want to rededicate my life to Christ today, that is that you have been saved, you have tasted and seen how good God is, and you have turned your back, but today you're saying, I'm making a pickup, and I'm turning on, I'm doing a, a, a 180, I'm turning back to God, and I'm repenting, and I'm giving my life back to Jesus Christ. And so, if you would say, I want to give my life to Christ, I want you to repeat after me, Father, in the name of Jesus, I repent of my sin, my, transgress my transgressions, my iniquities, God, and I ask Jesus Christ into my life. I acknowledge him as being the son of the living God, the only begotten of the Father, sent to this world and born of a virgin, lived a sinless life, and gave his life for me on Calvary. I acknowledge and I accept God that you buried him in a borrowed tomb, and then on the third day you rose him again with all power in his hand, seated now at the right hand of you, our Heavenly Father. And so I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior today. No longer bound by sin, I am free in Christ Jesus, and I'm free to operate in the liberty whereby Christ has made me free. I give my life to Jesus Christ. And now for you that's rededicating your life, if you, if you would repeat after me, Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, God, for this opportunity to come back to you to come back home and to rededicate my life to Jesus Christ. I am so grateful and I'm so thankful that you are a God of another chance and another chance and another chance. And I'm taking advantage of this chance this morning. I'm taking advantage of this opportunity and I'm running back to you, God. And I know that your arms are wide open to receive me. Today, I rededicate my life to Jesus Christ. I repent for turning my back on you. And I rededicate my life to Jesus Christ today. If you prayed those prayers, we thank you and we praise you. And I want you to reach out to me. I want you to send me an email at unwaveringfaithcc at gmail.com. Unwaveringfaithcc at gmail.com. I want to continue to pray with you. Amen. And I want to continue to pray for you. In the name of Jesus. Now, if you desire to, before we close, if you desire to sow into the ministry of Unwavering Faith Christian Church, you can do so uh, by going to our website at unwaveringfaithcc.com. That's unwaveringfaithcc.com, and you can sow there by way of PayPal. And also, if you desire, you can mail your seed in to Unwavering Faith Christian Church, P.O. Box 1011, Waco, Texas, 76703. We thank you in advance, amen, for sowing into the ministry, amen, and being a part of what God is doing uh, here at Unwavering Faith Christian Church. We thank God for you. We thank God for you. We thank God for you. May God's uh, peace be upon you this week. May God's blessings be upon you this week and continue to walk under an open heaven. Be healed, be whole, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. We love you. Thank you again so much for tuning in to today's broadcast. Be blessed.